All right, welcome to a special edition of Tuba Da Vinci. This week we are talking with Matt Farrell from Undecided. For anyone who hasn't heard of Matt before, he runs an amazing YouTube channel that we absolutely love. And we have the honor of doing a collaboration this week. Yeah, it's a really uh, good point you mentioned, Matt, that even though that like residential power wall deliveries were really halted, and I'm one of them, I have a reservation that I've been sitting on for about a year, uh, and I'm still waiting, that they did put that on pause for the Model 3 ramp up, but they did continue to invest in the grid scale battery storage. Again, I think this is part of the brilliance of the company and this idea that Elon has like the smackdown, like basically taking an industry that is the way it is and just showing what's possible. And I think in a lot of ways, a lot of this stuff ties together because as news breaks of, oh, you know, PG&E cutting power to all these people because they don't want to transmit from, from over there. And people's houses are now running on Tesla um, battery storage solutions. Um, people are going to start to think, wow, this is not just something in the future, but we're running towns on, on Tesla's battery packs. And that only fuels further ideas that then a Tesla car's batteries are going to be reliable and, and as well. And it'll, it's just, it all ties in. And what they have done such a masterful job of is dispelling the notions that people have had. And for batteries, you know, I'm sure you get this on your channel all the time. The argument is, ah, my iPhone after about two years uh, stops holding a charge. I can't, I had to charge in the middle of the day. I'm not going to buy a car that has that problem, right? Because an iPhone might be a couple hundred bucks, not maybe a thousand, but I'm not going to buy a $50,000 car that I have to replace the batteries after a couple of years. I've had several people write to me with Model S's with 300,000 miles on their batteries. Wow. Not kilometers, uh, miles. And they're reporting like 80%, uh, 75, 80% residual charge left. And we now have Model 3s that are hitting 100,000 miles. And to your point about the first thing people do when they get a Model 3 is they go on a huge road trip. I'm following yeah. a lot of guys on Twitter that, yeah, like, oh, I just drove to the East Coast and back in my Model 3. And they have 70,000 miles on their cars in a year. And so you can imagine how much driving they're doing. What they've done is, and in the energy business, I think it's kind of a similar thing. You know, if you talk grid scale, then it's good enough for me in my house kind of a thing. So I think there's, there's so much yeah. synergy into what they're doing. And when you hear batteries now, you kind of think Tesla. And so then you're buying a car. I don't know about these guys and they're, what they're doing with LG Cam or some other companies. They're all great companies, I'm sure. But in people's yeah. minds, there's that perception like Tesla. These are the guys that are doing all the, the heavy lifting. I'm going to buy a product yeah. from them, right? Yeah, they're, they're raising the bar for everybody. So they're now the baseline of what you have to meet. So anybody else that's creating a battery like LG Chem, it doesn't matter who it is. It's like, well, is this as good as a Tesla battery? Oh, it's not? Well, I'm just gonna go with Tesla. It's like they've, they've changed the, the conversation in a pretty profound way. They're currently not powering, they're not selling their batteries to other car EV manufacturers. Yeah. You think they might in the future? <laughs> Not to tease a future video I'm actually working on right now, but one of the things I talk about is just that. It's like I would, I would, I would love to see them open up and license a lot of their technology to other people, whether it's making batteries for third parties or their battery packs or their powertrains or their motors, whatever it is. It's like I think it would help the industry speed up the adoption and to move things in a much faster way. And if, it, if, it's their, if it's their goal to transition us to cleaner forms of electricity and to change transportation forever, it's like that would do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just hard to think of them doing that now because I think I, I kind of have this picture of the Gigafactory, like the batteries are coming out and they're getting like immediately put into use somewhere. <laughs> like they're just coming out. As soon as they come out, they've got a home. So yeah. there might come a point when we have some gigafactories, and I know they're going to have battery manufacturing in Gigafactory 3 in Shanghai. So there might come a point in the future when there's enough batteries to, to do that. For me, I'd like to see the cost come down. If that power wall came down from 7,000 to like 5,000 installed, I think that's probably the price point where people go, all right, my tax return came in. I'm getting a power wall. Like, I think people can start to, to rationalize that and, and say, now's the time for me to add battery storage. That might not be as far away as we think, probably. I hope not. So what about 2020 and the future of Tesla has you most excited? Well, for me, like we talked about with the energy business, it's like I'm super excited about where that's going. But it's more around, <laughs> it's honestly, it's what they're going to do with their additional cars that they're, they're coming up with. Like the Cybertruck, I am 
way too excited about the Cybertruck. Even though I'm still not in love with the way it looks, it's like the, what, the fact that they are so out there with how they're willing to push the boundaries. I feel like with the Cybertruck, Tesla took the handcuffs off. It's like they created the original Roadster, the original Model S, in ways that we were used to cars, to create these cars that were highly desirable, that competed with very specific products. And it was meant to get us on board. And now that they've got us on board and they're creating things at scale, mass market volumes, I feel like they finally have just said, you know what, you know, we've achieved that goal. Let's take us to the next level. So it's like Tesla 2.0 for me is Cybertruck. And so just the fact that they're willing to even go there says to me, well, what's the next sedan they come out going to look like? Like when they come up with their next Model 3, whatever that might be, it's like, what is that thing going to look like? It, it gets me so excited as to where the future is, where they're going to take this. Yeah, so if any, anyone who's from my channel that hasn't seen, you have to check out, he has uh, a couple of videos on the Cybertruck, and he talks about kind of the, the thought process, and actually your video <laughs> kind of summed up how I felt perfectly. Uh, the <laughs> night I watched it, I was thinking, this is crazy, and it's just so different. And, and, and Matt's video talks about kind of how it takes some time and how change is like literally painful for our minds. And uh, yeah. that video I think was spot on. It should be, anyone who has any thoughts about this should watch that video because it'll kind of explain. And I think it's kind of a, a move that they made on purpose. It was, you know, it was planned that way. I think they wanted to kind of have that impact on people. And I think their, their brand is powerful enough now that they can pull it off. Yeah, absolutely. For me, what I'm most excited about is the level of disruption that they're going to have in terms of how we think about cars in general. One of the comments that I get often, and it's actually a pretty good comment, is the most economic thing you can do is keep driving your current car, right? And, and, yeah. and just eliminate the need to have another car out in the world to manufacture, to get the raw materials and everything else. So we actually did a video that talks about that, and it turns out I think it's like seven years is what, how long it would take for a Tesla to, to beat out an old car that you've already had on the road for a while. The, the fact remains that we've, we think of cars increasingly as something to keep for less and less time. I think the, the BMW, Audi owners of the world keep one of their cars for about three years, and they're like, all right, I'm done with you. Maybe it's a lease. I want the next thing. I want the next version of, of what, what it is you make. And I think what Tesla might be doing is kind of changing how we think about how long you can potentially keep a car. If you have a huge touch screen and the interface can change and they can introduce things like dark mode, I, I don't know if you're an iOS user, if like dark mode yeah. is a big deal to iOS users, um, yeah. they could do things like that. And they already have dark mode, but the point is like they could add new UI elements to the screen. They could add new features. Joe mode comes, comes to mind, especially if you have children. And I think what they might be able to do is to make people rethink how they imagine owning a car. A lot of millennials are famous for not being interested in cars. And most of my younger family, I have cousins now that are turning 17, 18, like ready to drive. <laughs> and they don't care about cars that much. Like when I grew up, I had car magazines and, and I think it's kind of true, but they all love Tesla. And so in yeah. their minds, it might kind of be, I get a Tesla and I can keep it for 15 years because the batteries will last. And then maybe I'll just change the batteries out in 15 years when they're really cheap. I, I can only imagine how cheap they would get at that point. And I can just keep driving my Model 3. Maybe I, I'm on version 9 of the chip and the CPU and the, the computers, and I just keep on driving. Imagine a world 10 years after Tesla kind of starts establishing themselves, where maybe car ownership, that trend reverses and it goes the other way. And people go yeah. from owning their car and holding it for less and less to the other way around and keeping them for 15 years and they have full self-driving and they're learning and getting better with software updates. Now that's a world where the, the cleanliness of the cars is gonna really increase because we don't have to keep manufacturing so many cars. Yeah, there, there are kind of like, I've said this so many times and I always get hate comments when I bring this up, but there, there's, there's so much like Apple. Apple created highly desirable consumer electronics that just dominated college campuses. Like there's like famous pictures. I remember like when Mac is a bit player, but there was this photo from some university and like every kid in the class <laughs> was just Apple logos. And there was like one Windows guy in the corner. It's like every college student wanted a MacBook. And so it's like, it feels like there's something similar happening here with Tesla's products. It's, it's highly desirable. Millennials and young people really want to get on board with this because they just love the mission of what Tesla is doing. I'm surprised you mentioned that you've gotten a lot of uh, pushback or oh. comments that, you know, a lot of, a lot of hate time. mail, um, which is surprising. 
because yeah, I think they are similar companies. They're very mission focused and 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 people love their founders. Like people loved Steve Jobs and people love Elon Musk. And they kind of want to support them in whatever it is that they do because they kind of identify with them or they they like what they do. And in, right. in many ways, yeah, Tesla has has taken like owning a car to make it fun again, right? You know, I yeah. had I have two gas Hondas that are paid off. I have zero car loan, car payments. Um, and I work, like you mentioned, I also work from home. I have recently fallen out of any interest in buying a car. I've driven by Audi dealerships and uh, like Porsches or BMWs. And I used to be a big BMW fan when I was younger. Um, I found them to be very high maintenance and expensive and I, I wouldn't recommend them anymore. But when I was young, like an M3 might've been a cool car. But the thought of buying a car today just didn't appeal to me. I had zero interest until Tesla came along. And yeah. the excitement that I have about getting my Model 3, it's, uh, it's real. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm super, super pumped. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for us. Uh, thank you again, Matt, so much for joining us today. This has been a blast. Um, hasn't been easy. We've had some technical difficulties and things, but hopefully we can do more of this in the future. Yeah, I, I loved it. This was a lot of fun. I'm so glad that we got to do this together. Yeah, and for anyone who hasn't seen Matt's channel, Matt Farrell, Undecided, you got to check him out. He's on YouTube. He does a lot of the same kinds of content that we do. He explores technology and the future of technology and how it will impact our lives. So I have a feeling if you like our channel, you'll love his. So definitely get, make it over there and uh, subscribe to him as well. But that pretty much does it for us. Thank you again so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, uh, share this video if you liked it, and leave us your comments and let us know if you liked it and uh, if you have any feedback for how we can improve on things for the next time. That pretty much does it for us. I'm Ricky with 2 Da Vinci. Thank you so much for watching.